Lewis Morley, photographer of the 60s. This is a, a 96 page national portrait catalogue, I think, which I think Terence Pepper curated. And it's about Lewis's productive period of photography in the 60s. He was a publicity, magazine, theatre, um, portrait, a bit of reportage photographer as well. Did a bit of fashion, really, really productive um, photographer uh, right through the 60s. And then in 1971, he emigrated to Australia and he lived and sadly died there um, in 2013 in Sydney. He was born in Hong Kong in 1925. I think he's an amazing portrait photographer. I picked this up for next to nothing and I just thought and thought, wow, I've got to talk about this, just got to show you some of this work. Like I said, it's from the, the National Portrait Gallery. It's got a little bit of damage on the cover there, but so what? His work, his whole body, his archive was donated to, I think, the Bradford Media Museum, I think, is it? In, in the Media Museum in Bradford, his whole archive. And I think this exhibition was basically what photography, the portrait gallery, has in their archives of his work. So, 96 pages, it's a lovely, it's a lovely size as well. It's something, um, you know, that little bit bigger than an A4 size. I've got a bit of an A4 there. It's just a lovely, lovely size. It's got a lovely matte finish to it as well. So, there's an introduction by, there's the forward and acknowledgement, introduction by Terence Pepper, Scandalous Bodies by David Meller, catalogue 27 and page 91, list of exhibits, and 95 list, index of sitters. And what I'll show you, it's a self-portrait of him there. I'm not sure who the band is. And this is by, I think it's an introduction by Terence Pepper. And here is an insight into his life, his, his, his sort of character, I guess, all done and all outlined with Terence Pepper and his sort of memorable photographs of um, Joe Orton and Christine Keeler, which I think it probably is in here. I think this is the Christine Keeler shot here, which he got a little bit of, quite a bit of publicity for. That was in 1963, and that was the cover, obviously. So, here again is the Carnival of the 60s, Scandalous Bodies. I think, I'm not sure, but I, I, this might have been quite a, a bit of a thing to do in the 60s, having some naked girl hidden behind a chair. And that's a bit from the Christine Keeler contact sheet that'll come down on that. It's a really lovely, lovely catalogue. And there's a naked Jordan, which surprises me. So I think this is an overview, some footnotes to the referencing in there. And then you go right to the back, and then there's this lovely image index, or a list of, ex a list of exhibits from the exhibition. So it's, it's fantastic. And that leads you to an, an index of subjects illustrated. So that's sort of Cecil Beaton to Marriott, Steve Marriott to John Wells, to Susan Stranks, to John Thorpe. And that's like the page numbers are sort of an extra reference. Now let's have a look through it. I've cut the crop on it now, so where will we start? This is, I'll get that. This is a self-portrait in 1959, so at the beginning, I think obviously 59, the journey, number one is self-portrait, quite reflective, beautiful, almost looks like something from the 19th century, doesn't it? So that's his wife, Patricia. So this is 1955, John Widenham and her daughter Camilla. And this is Terry Hamilton. And that's, a, I think he's a graphic designer. And I guess this is, it's, it's interesting how this is starting off because this is his sort of street photography in a way. And this is 1961, it's, it's quite interesting because these are, this is Professor Albert Richardson's dog. And, and this was a published for Tatler magazine. This was Trainspotter, which I think is just a random shot. It's a great shot, classic Trainspotter. And now we're sort of moving into more 
of the commission. This is almost like a fashion shoot, isn't it? Almost at an editorial style. This is Jean Shrimpton and Chris Powell, and that's Susanna York and Michael Wells. This was for Goff magazine. This was Jean Shrimpton's first ever modelling assignment in 1961. And Susanna York and Michael Wells. This was in Paris. Twiggy by the looks of it. And this is Justin de Villeneuve. And this was for London Life, street fashion feature, Charlotte Rampling. And I think this was just something a shot at her flat. She's got access, hasn't he? He's got a lot of access to um, some very well-known and interesting people. So this is Keith Waterhouse and Willis Hall, and that's 1960. And this is Lindsay Anderson, 1960. And he's a film director, and I think this is this is the Billy Lyre set, I'm sure it is. And this is, like I said, this is Keith and Willis. And this is Billy Lyre as well, yeah. Tom Courtney and Albert Finney, 60 and 61. Some beautiful portraits. Absolutely stunning portraits, I love these. And we easily forget, there was no digital then, it was all film. You had to really interpret the shot, didn't you? You had, to, you had to know what you were getting when you were shooting. And not like you can look in the back of the screen now, which I think a lot of people forget. This was the Tom Courtney, Billy Liar uh, film. And this was, again, Billy Liar at the Cambridge Theatre. More, this is Alan Bennett and Dudley Moore. Jacqueline Dupre and Raymond Lepard. This was, a, he's a conductor and composer. That was for Tatler. And that was, I think it's a, a cellist, and that was in a back garden and a parent's house. A bit of a strange, surreal shot, isn't it? Classic portraits, absolutely stunning. Aren't they beautiful? You can see why he was getting the work. It was fantastic. Well ahead of his time. Robin Ray and Suzanne Stranks, 1960. Anthony Powell and Ricardo Aragano. I think Anthony Powell adapted his novel, doesn't he? That was what it was, The Afternoon Men in 1931. And it was performed at the New Arts Theatre in 1963. These are TV personalities, Robin Ray and Stranks, Michael Caine, Johnny Spate. This is Naka's Yard and Michael Caine was shot for the New Age Theatre in The Next Time I'll Sing to You and just before he left to do Zulu. Sean Phillips, Alan Bardell, Philip Wiseman, 1963 and Athol Thrugard, Zex Mark, John Berry, and Ian Bannon. Felicity Kendall and Drew Henley. And that's John Cleese. Look at the young John Cleese. Look at how good that is. Isn't that amazing? Ah, oh, there's just such good photography. I love the edit as well. I love the edit. I think this is just a standard um, publicity shot or a writer's and a comedian shoot. It doesn't say who it's for. Felicity Candle and her husband, right? That's Drew Henry, that was her husband, but her first husband. This is Adam Faith with one of his Rolls Royces photographed for Woman's Day on eligible battle shillers of the 1960s. Couple of rollers, as well. Tom Jones, early 60s. And this was for a, a costume fitting with Sylvia Goss in the early 60s. Look at them shoes, wow. Jim Dale of the Drags. He's an actor and I think it might be in a publicity shop. Look at them shoes, they're amazing. Brian Epstein. 
It's just a, a, a regular, very noirish sort of shot for um, a general shot. It doesn't really say what it's for. Brian Epstein and his car in Liverpool, I think. Liverpool. Yeah, 1963. Billy J. Kramer and Hines. And this was for She, a fashion feature. The small faces, wow, look at them. Fresh faces. Dave Clark, 1964, Kenny Everett and Lee Everett. And this was for She magazine. And this is just a general shot. Jeff Beck, I think this shot here was the, the shot which, Law, which Jeff Beck used when he left the Yardbirds for a solo career. I think that was that shot. Donovan, 1965. Private Eye. Private Eye fashion, very nice. Elena Brun, actress. Bernard Levin, journalist, 1963. David Frost, what a shot. Do you know what? I've never, I would never associate David Frost with this. That's wonderful. It's great photography, isn't it? It just learns stuff. It's a bit soft. What the heck? Maybe it was the shot which wasn't meant to happen, you know, because it's a bit soft for what I've seen of his work. And maybe this was that one dynamic shot which was different from the rest and it was very apt for the setup and not a sort of straight laced Frost as we associate with the persona of David Frost. Anyway, really interesting. This is Melissa Martin. I think she was, that was the week that was presenter. Nancy Spain, Barry Humphreys. And there's a lot of the stuff's behind the scenes. It's a access what not many people's going to see. And he was in a very privileged position and must have been an amazingly affluent period for him and a very productive and he must have learned so much. What a great 10 years he had. Look at that. Harrison Berthwistle, composer. That's such great photography, bit of split. Actually more Rembrandt, isn't it? It's a split and that's got that light that's a bit Rembrandt lighting style. Peter Maxwell Davies. Look at that. Oh, it's amazing. Judy Dench. Peter O'Toole. How young is Peter O'Toole there? James Wedge. Sean Kenny. That's amazing. He's got a really great knack of, of getting a personality out. Very... It's not that intrusive his shots either, they're very relaxed. He's obviously got a lot of trust. You can see he waits for moments. And, and to be honest, it's an interesting edit shot, that, because I've seen with a David Frost, it's quite, not quite the shot you might put into the edit, but absolutely make up the, 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 the feel of the time, really. I wonder, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm just, I would say that's the style early on of them, editorial style shots. It was quite sort of stiff and posed and, I'd like to look a little bit more into that type of um, portraiture around them periods. Obviously, we associate Bailey and other photographers and Terry Richardson and Donovan and stuff like that, and it's a, a lot of other photographers shooting that sort of, that style, and David Hearn, and, and I'd just like to see on the whole a pattern which was emerging with the studio style and editorial style portraits. Um, this is, like I said, this is James Wedge, who is a fashion photographer, a designer, hat designer. The Jordan, look at that. I wonder what the concept was, who I, whose idea this was to get them naked behind the um, thingy, that is a fashion model, I think, and designer and Jordan playwright, obviously. Eve Anthony, I think these are models, aren't they? 
Mina Bird and Peter Smith. John Hurt, look at that. Oh, these are so lovely. I think that uh, Dizzy is a, was a famous fashion hairdresser, I think, in West London, and that's his model. John Hurt, obviously no famous actor. Warren Mitchell and the cast for The Council of Love. Tim Priest, John Hurt, Rodney Buse and Kenneth Colley in Little Malcolm and his struggle against the eunuchs, 1966. John Thor, Clint Eastwood. Look at the hairstyle, really similar. Fashion, 1962, 1969. Well, seven years apart. Amazing. John Wells, Tariq Ali and Vanessa Redgrave at a demonstration, Vietnam. And a, a, a fitting, amazing, beautiful, fantastic shot to walk out of this from Cecil Beaton. Not much you can say, a beautiful shot. It was a shot at a wedding. He's obviously well regarded and well trusted and he you know, somebody like Cecil Beaton letting them mess around and um, doing the shadows. And you could treat this with anybody because it's Cecil Beaton and because it's Lewis Morley and it's the 60s, it becomes a little bit special. And this is a really little special booklet and I'm really pleased I've got it. And thank you, Lewis, for leaving this legacy for us. Rest in peace, mate.